All right, so I'm here with Tiffany. Tiffany, how old are you? 32. Are you originally from Arizona? No. Where are you from? Kansas City, Missouri. How long have you been out here in Arizona? Almost four years. Four years? Mm -hmm. What brings you out here? Um, a friend of mine, he lived out here. Uh, wasn't so good back home. I was homeless out there anyway, so, you know. Uh, but before I moved out here, like literally, I was on the Greyhound. He got robbed for his rent money. Got him going out on the streets, so. We were, I've been out here on the streets since I got here, literally. So you moved out here with a friend? Was it a boyfriend or? No, just my best friend. Just your best yeah. friend? Yeah, but he's in prison right now, so. I, I've been, I was only out here with him for like eight months and then he got locked up. He's been locked up since. I've been out here by myself. What's your current situation right now? Are you homeless? Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been homeless? Uh, the entire time I've been out here. The whole four years almost that I've been out here, plus probably six or seven years in Kansas City before I got out here. You know, you get a place here and there, but it doesn't last very long. You know, something falls out of place for you and it ruins everything. So you were telling me that you've been from place to place? Yeah. Do you have any family members out here? Mm -mm. No. No, I got nobody out here. Just people I've met since I've been out here, basically all homeless. We all tend to help each other out though, for the most part. I mean, you got your grimy people, but for the most part, I mean, as long as you're not doing everybody grimy, they'll have your back. Keep you safe at night, at least. Do you have family back home in Kansas? Yeah, Kansas? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I just don't talk to them very much. You don't? So they don't know about your situation? No, I let them believe that I'm doing good. What? I let them believe that I'm doing good. And why is that? I don't want to break my parents' heart, you know? Yeah. They thought when I came out here it was going to be something good, and then potentially it could have been. Had my friend not gotten robbed before I got out here, it would have been something. But um, unfortunately, it happened, and so I'm not doing good. So my mom thinks I have a job, and she thinks I'm doing good, and, you know, it keeps my mom from stressing out and being able to sleep at night, you know? I don't ask her for money, I don't ask her for anything. Even when Christmas just came, I didn't get the money on Christmas. Like, she hounded me all day long for it. <laughs> How can I send it to you? How can I send it to you? I didn't get it until like two days ago. So I wasn't trying to just get my mom's money, you know? Yeah. I'm doing what I can out here to survive. And she doesn't need to know anything about what I'm doing out here, you know? It just hurt her. So what do you do out here to survive? Um, I fly a sign. Um, I fly a sign all over right here. Down there at the Taco Bell and then right up there, um, 40th and Dow, sometimes under the bridge over there, 32nd Street, Roosevelt, that's a good spot. But uh, the holiday's ending, it's, it's dies down quite heavily, actually. It goes from being quite a bit of money to being like nothing, real fast. How much do you usually make a day? Mm, depending on how long I stand out there and where I'm at, I can make almost two, 300 bucks a day if I really wanted to. If I stood in the right spot all day. Yeah. Um, of course, I spend my money with everybody else, you know, like I'm always helping everybody out. Yeah. Usually I got a cart with me. I just recently had somewhere I could put my stuff in someone's backyard, so. But uh, normally, yeah, I'd have a cart full of clothes and everything else that I just hand out to everybody as they need it, you know. But not today. It's all put up right now. <laughs> it's kind of nice. I wanted to carry around a couple bags right now. What about substances? Do you have a substance abuse problem? Yeah. I would say, honestly, everybody out here is homeless does. If you're not, then you don't have no excuse to be out here on these streets. You know what I mean? Like, there ain't no way that I could do what I do and then make as much money as I do and not have a substance problem and not have gotten my shit together. Like, yeah. you know, with those blues, man, they get a hold of you. That's all there is to it. Those blues, they take you over. Anybody that's not on them shouldn't do them, ever. Don't try them. Don't, don't even go around them. Just ignore them. They used to call Chris the devil, but these blues ain't got shit on That shit's horrible for you. I've detoxed so many times, and it's like, like I went to jail for a whole week, quick cold turkey. And when I got out, I should have been detoxed, I should have been sober, I should have been fine. But the second I got out, I literally was sick again, as if I had just been without, you know what I mean, for like a day. It was horrible, like, I immediately had to go find a pill as soon as I got out. And it wasn't just in my mind, it was like, I literally was sweating, I had cold chills, I was sick, like I was puking, I was... It's 
horrible. Like, you just can't get away from them. And they're everywhere out here. Did you know about these blues when you were back in Kansas? Um, well, out there they got what they call the thirties, which are actually thirties. And you smoke them out there too, but uh, they're not at all, you yeah. know? And they're, so they're more controlled substance. Like, fentanyl is an uncontrolled substance all day long. Its potency doesn't change. It does whatever it wants to do, you know? It can be stronger, it can be weaker. That's why people overdose on it. We've been smoking blues all day long for years. Like, all of a sudden one pill kills them in one hit. It's because that fentanyl, they, you can't guarantee what the amount is in each pill. Like, you just can't. So you're always taking a risk every time you hit that pill. But what's out there, it's always just at 30 and I mean they don't burn the same they don't taste the same and they don't give you the same high but they don't I, as far as I know they don't have the blues out there I'm glad they don't those are gonna take that place over when they do get there they go for probably like I know the 30 milligrams so those go for like $60 a pop so for these ones out here they probably go the same price that's ridiculous Sixty dollars a pop out here. We pay like a dollar, two dollars a pop. That's what I heard. So I would literally be making bank off of one pill. It's horrible. I couldn't afford it out there. There's no way, no way. Come up sixty dollars a day. I smoke like thirty dollars, thirty pills a day, at minimum. Like, it's horrible. So where do you sleep at night? Um, for the most part, there's a couple places up there. Like when it rains, that Western Dental place up there, they let you sleep underneath the, the awnings and shit. And they'll leave you alone for the most part during the night. Um, I've actually talked to people that actually own the place and run the place. And they gave us the broom and let us clean it up and stuff, you know. So as long as we clean it up, we're fine. And other than that, though, we just kind of hide in a bush somewhere. or Because everywhere's like a, uh, I don't know, the law's got some sort of uh, right to arrest or something, yeah. anywhere you go. doesn't matter where you're at. So you just gotta go somewhere you're not seen. Um, there for a while I was sleeping in the bushes in front of Taco Bell. And there's like five of us down there, because when you drive past you can't see down there. The buses can, but yeah. nobody else can. You can't see down there. So we slept down there for a good like month and a half. We just cleaned it up every day, made sure it didn't look like we were there all night. Is it dangerous on this side? It's dangerous everywhere. But on this side, um, it's gotten a lot worse since I got out here now than it was when I got here. There's been a lot of people getting shot and killed. Yeah. Um, a lot of people being murdered around here a lot. What is it over? Is it over the blues? Mostly, yeah. As far as I know, um, some of it people don't talk about, you know, because it's just stuff that will literally get you killed. You talk about it too much, so you just leave it alone. But. Yeah, most of it's got to do with blues or money or, you know. Not so much about the meth, though. Yeah. Just those blues. It's crazy. They kill you over one blue. If you get sick enough, find the right person, they'll rob you for everything you got for your, like, slide off a tray, literally. It's sad. Yeah, it is. It's really sad. And the pills aren't getting any better, they're getting worse. They're getting so they don't last as long on a tray. You know, whereas you get 10 or 12 hits from one pill before, you get like four now. So that's having to like quadruple your amount of money you're spending on a day. And that's taking a bigger risk on overdosing. We just do it anyways, we don't care. What do you think we could do to stop the epidemic? Honestly, I don't think there is a stop to it. It's gonna have to just play itself out, for real, because it's already everywhere. I mean, yeah. it's slowly going literally everywhere. But out here, it's everywhere. I mean, you can get them from anybody. The people you would look in the store and say, like, nah, they don't do blues. They got blues. They got them or they sell them or they can, they can get them. And if not, they do them. There's hardly anybody out here that doesn't do blues anymore. You try to take them away, we're all liable to kill each other. I don't think there is a stop to it. Not at all. You can offer us as much as you want to, but at the end of the day, an addict's an addict. We're still gonna want it regardless. No matter what help you give us, it's, I mean, it's, it's the reality of it. I'm an addict. Those pills make me feel nothing, you know? Like I don't feel the pain I have inside from everything else in my life, all the hurt and all the 
frustrations and things that I've been through. And when I'm not now, everybody's looking at me like, damn, that girl alive or whatever, or whatever they're looking at me like, because I'm sitting there slumped over. But that time, I feel the best. Because I don't feel nothing. I don't feel anything. I feel good. I feel okay. I feel like my life might have been okay somewhat versus what it's really been. You try to take that away from people, it's not gonna be good. Having to make all of us face our demons like that all the time, that's never good. It's not gonna go anywhere. It'll be here for years and years to come. They're not going anywhere. Do we have any younger viewers that are thinking about trying to lose your gene? What kind of advice would you give them? Just don't do it. I know not all of us out here look like, you know, you're normal, like what you consider a homeless person on the streets who does drugs, but don't get it wrong. I may have done drugs all my life and I still look somewhat better than most, but it's not worth it. I lost my entire family. I've lost my kids. I've lost everything. I got nothing left. I got these streets. I got my homies on the streets. That's about it. So just don't do it. You love your family, you love your friends, you love yourself, don't do it. Find some other way to do it. It ain't right. You don't want that. It's not fun. You have to fight this shit every day. That's all I do all day long is chase this truck. All day. I don't do anything else but do that. All right, well, thank you for this interview. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Are you okay with me using it on my YouTube channel? Yeah, for sure. All right, thank you. You're welcome.